Thanks for staying tuned. Uh, welcome back to our COVID-19 update. My next guest uh, has been uh, deeply involved in the last couple of years in managing systems and ensuring that they are not vulnerable to attacks. Uh, and now with the increased usage of uh, these various platforms, I guess his role has become even more important. I'm being joined uh, here in the studios by Mr. Adjoche Rock, who is also a cyber uh, security expert. Thank you for coming in. Now, from what uh, Mr. Matthew, who, was, uh, who spoke before the break, uh, mentioned, a lot of people have migrated to these platforms out of necessity, not necessarily because they wanted to or because they understand how they work. So that leaves them vulnerable and leaves them vo uh, the information they pass on these platforms, even the documentation they pass on these platforms, vulnerable. Uh, given your experience in this area, would you say Nigeria is better prepared to tackle this aspect of the challenge? Okay, um, thank you for that opportunity. Um, first, I would say no one is really, really prepared for to, because COVID-19 just took us unawares. But um, it's important I mentioned that um, Nigerian government is doing a lot in addressing this. I know as at April, Central Bank, the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Apex um, Financial Regulator, released um, it did a press release on what um, financial institutions need to do to protect the data of their customers, and. Um, that being said, um, though it's not as holistic as it should be, but um, research has shown that there are so much new vulnerabilities people are exposed to while using um, third-party platforms, especially now that people work from home. Yeah. Now, uh, there, there are the issues of com uh, uh, video conference meetings, uh, virtual meetings, sometimes involving dozens of people where highly confidential information is passed around and so on. How vulnerable are these systems, for example, to hacking? Well, um, they are, all systems are vulnerable. It just depends on the level of um, security measures, in-depth security measures you have in place to, uh, to address it. First, from the corporate world, where I'm very familiar with, um, you have situations where the entire customer service unit of a bank has been told to do on a rotational shift, work from home today, this week, next week, you resume. In that light, people use their own system sometimes for to access company resource. And what most what most institutions do, financial and non-financial, is to provide VPN access. But we've actually seen where fake VPN alerts have put people at risk. You understand? Like recently, even last week, it was on global news. What is fake VPN alert? You just, from your personal system, you're connected to your office system, and you have that sense of security. But you just see a pop-up coming that your VPN is click here to reconnect. Meanwhile, it's actually a fake alert. And how does that pop-up come in? Third-party websites, you use your private system to access, where you give them access to show you notification from the top left corner of your screen. And when you give a third-party web access, they can pop up anything on your system. So if they cajole you to click, and you click, and it takes you to a malicious website, you're going to be vulnerable. You have no idea what they put. If they even take you to a look-alike um, Web, platform, yes, web, like if you, you understand. Know. Office 365 was a major target in this. That was what happened. And in that, in that specific attack, corporate users were putting their credentials, username and passwords, unknowing to them, they are just sending all their details to a malicious actor somewhere. In that light, they've kept, they, are, they have been hacked. They are vulnerable, if, including the company's financial assets. So in that light, there are so many vulnerabilities. Now, what the company needs to do in this regard is first, awareness. Secondly, ensure endpoint security. Endpoint security just simply um, denotes that you secure all your endpoints. Every system that is going to be customer facing, that is going to be staff facing, you make sure they are compliant with the latest security, in compliance with global standards, ISO 27001 and all that. So, but um, just like the other um, user mentioned in Akute, um, it's actually a behavior that most reg, uh, financial institutions are actually doing because they want to stay compliant to regulatory requirements. Not necessarily because. Not necessarily because, you understand. So when you now look at that chunk of percentage of people that are vulnerable, and you now look at those non-financial, it's quite large. So Nigeria is really, really exposed. Back to your question. So in that light, what the government needs to do um, is to push out security awareness initiatives on a broad scale. 
both at government levels, and um, individuals need to be um, need to be careful how they use their data. In terms of the tele the service providers themselves, who people are paying, and uh, uh, a number of those I've spoken to say that in the last uh, two or three months they are smiling to the banks because even people who are not who were not tech savvy, going back to what Mr. Matthew said, are finding that they are using more of the applications online in order to be able to communicate yeah. at various levels. What are they, what are they uh, supposed to be doing? What are they doing, if they are doing, and what, if not, what are they supposed to be doing to ensure that those who pay for those services first get quality, okay. and then secondly, are not exposed to these vulnerabilities that you mentioned? OK, thank you. Thank you for that. So first, um, it's important to bring to light that not all um, incidents, cybersecurity incidents, is being Sometimes the service provider has not little or nothing to do. It's just the individual themselves exposing themselves to malicious activities. You by understand? their own work. By their own work. Sometimes, and COVID-19 has also brought out some realities. A spike in unintentional insider threats. What do I mean? You, and this is also where a lot of government institutions, a lot of corporate world needs to be careful with. You have a situation where the entire board is having a video conferencing meeting, a very discussing about sensitive company information, strategies. And you have different users recording it. You have to know when not to and when you should record. If you're not authorized to record, you shouldn't record your screen. But when you're working from home, you can actually record your screen and there's no the, you, the, the, the management does not know you're recording your screen. So this is how unintentional insider threat comes in. Do you understand? So in that capacity, you need to know that that's video you're recording it's not your data it is the data of the company so people do not still understand the level of implication they expose their company to when they do things do like, things that, like this from you understand so that's one side on the service provider side yes um i don't think there's really much um, a service provider can do but however what they could do is to actually push out security awareness tips to their end users. And uh, uh, it's also important we give kudos to, to the banks. A lot of banks have been doing this, a lot of Nigerian banks. Uh, funny enough, um, Nigerian banks are really stepping up their game. So actually, they've opted for security as a service, you understand? So they are really doing well in that regard in sensitize because the case is monumental now. Um, yes, because the, I was going to point out that yes. a lot of people, because they can't go physically to the bank anymore it's monumental. because of the issue of distancing. Yeah, yeah, we, we've, we've had countless cases, even I personally involved in, 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 in investigation, and you understand, in this to establish evidence that you have been hacked and why you should be hacked, uh, how you were hacked. So such instances, um, individuals need to first ensure that there was a study that revealed that breach victims do not actually reset their password, change their password. They keep using the, they same, keep using password. the same password. There's another lie to this. Sometimes users are lazy to say, okay, and you won't actually blame people. We are all human beings. You have your Yahoo password, you have your Gmail password, you have your corporate password, you have everything password. So sometimes you may just be lazy to just say safe on browser. You understand? Now you're not in the office. Nobody is going to mandate you. This is an IT, a core IT function for all users to um, how corporate enterprise check their staffs through a technique called minimum password length and maximum password age. Maximum password age is the time it will take you, the company is going to force you like 30 days for some to reset your password. Once you resume to your desk in the morning, once you try to log on to the AD, to the Active Directory, it tells you to reset your password. But now you are home, you're using your own personal devices. Those operational controls are not there. there. So you are using a password that is six, six months old. You're using a password that is the same password for your Yahoo account, for your personal account. For, do you understand? So it creates a lot of vulnerability, risk, you understand, both to the user and to the corporate world. Then on the side of quality QoS, on quality of service, the truth is, there's going to be a spike in internet usage. Currently, Nigeria has, if not one of the most, I think it has the most internet, we have the most highest internet density in right. Africa. For you now. understand? So coming into COVID-19, first, you're going to have poor QS, except service providers scale up their infrastructure. If they don't scale up their infrastructure, it's going to affect users. One of the major areas that this creates a concern is in telehealth, when hospitals rely on video conferencing to, be able to, to diagnose, to diagnose patients. patients. When you have poor QoS on that 
service, you, can, you know the ripple effect. It's more worrisome when you need to administer on patients who don't even, they are, they are in resource constraint areas, who don't even have the network at all. You can imagine that kind of thing. So these are some of the issues government needs to come in, involve, and ensure that um, there's robust capacity for companies to churn out their services. Uh, a bit technical, but I'm sure that a lot of our viewers can, uh, can, can follow that. Mr. Dirty Rock, thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank, thank you for you. coming in. Uh, Mr. Rock, of course, is a cyber security expert. And uh, even though that sounded a lot technical, there are many of uh, those who are watching who will understand that these are some of the things that need to be addressed.